Chris, ticker tagging. We were talking about that earlier this week. Tell our audience what that might mean. Well, when you ticker tag either an article or a research report, it allows uh, you know investors to actually find the information you know, easily or more easily uh, because the actual tickers of the company are, are tagged to the article or the report. Um, you know, these days with thousands of different uh, ways of uh, you know getting your news, lots of different mediums from you know uh, uh, internet to YouTube. Um, unless you ticker tag their information, you know, investors may not be able to find it um, as easy as they could. Uh, and that's what you want to do when you're a company or, or a public company looking for, um, you know, getting a reach, a, a bigger reach for your uh, information. Well, I think where I was referencing it is many uh, investors out there have broker terminals. OK, a lot of the average investor doesn't have a broker terminal. They, they can cost anywhere from what? They cost anywhere from two to say five thousand dollars a month. Right. So if you're a full time investor, you're wealthy. You want to invest your own money. You want to have your own terminal. You have your own terminal. You then get notified when they have what news releases and research analyst reports. Yeah, you set up uh, when you you set up a, a watch list. The, these terminals often have both uh, you know company data as well as market data, but they also have information on research. Uh, and news alerts when they come on them. So if you're watching a specific company or sector, you would get notified when a new research report or new news release came across the wire, uh, as they as they call it. And so yeah, so it's a it's an important way to keep informed on companies as well as you know doing a little more in depth research on companies you might be following or have invested in already. So companies, for instance, they'll call me and I'll say you need some writing. Okay, no one on your team can clearly communicate effectively what your story is and where you're at. Analyst, you're an analyst. Of course, you've worked very hard to get that status, secure that status. Analysts can write research reports. And there's a wide variety of research reports that you can get as a public market company. Would you like to give an overview to capital market CEOs that are seeking to get research coverage? Yeah, so I mean, not all research is the same, and not all reports are the same. And and one of the main points you want to look at is is the distribution of where the reports are actually going and who's reading it. And so, if, unless the you have the research that's being uploaded onto things like platforms like Cap IQ and um, FactSet and Refinitiv, um, you know, Zacks, etc., where your your investors and your your investment professionals are looking for these types of reports. Um, you know, they won't be able to find them. And so it's kind of worthless. And that's why, you know, making sure you're working with a firm that uploads um, the re research reports to these platforms, as well as, uh, you know, distributes them across a variety of other media, including, you know, the internet, uh, newsletters, as well as, uh, you know, YouTube and, and, and places like Investor Intel, which has a, a good uh, a source of, of financial information. Well, so being more specific, you know, I personally love when public companies employ a, a research analyst because then we're given really clear text to understand. So we do really great interviews. But let's go back to the terminals. The individuals that have terminals, my first gig in this industry was in 2001 with a venture capitalist. They all had Bloomberg terminals, mm -hmm. and that's what they were called at the time. And I think they were 2,500 US at the time. And uh, you know, they would get a little ping when a research analyst provided coverage. It was kind of a different notification. Is that still the case? Uh, I'm not sure uh, if they're still getting pings because that might make the office uh, quite uh, uh, mellow, uh, lots of melodies ringing. But definitely, the, usually you get uh, some sort of alert. Mostly now it's visual. You'll get a little R beside the company for research. Or if you've set up a watch list, uh, you know, you might get an alert sent to you by email or by text. That's how most of it is popular right now. Like I have watch lists on my terminal that sends me anytime any of the covered companies that I am following has a research report, it gets sent to me or a news release. And so that's how typically you're getting the information now. But yeah, it is definitely, it's, a, it's some sort of notification to allow you to follow the companies more closely and to be able to, to know that the research has been published. 
And if I'm correct, not every analyst, you know, people call you all the time and say, hey, can I write a report? Can I do a report on, you know, some of the companies that you're covering? Um, they're not all approved for distribution in these terminals. Is that correct? Yeah, you have to get approval uh, through the actual, even each individual um, software application that has a terminal uh, a product will review your research to make sure it's as high quality because they don't want to just have anything or anyone on the actual platform. Now, e-research has been around for 20 years, so we have longstanding relationships with the, 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 the terminal providers to upload our, our research into uh, their platforms. Um, and, you know, they've reviewed the, the, the work itself and, and know that it's a high quality. It's not like a marketing piece. It's actually, you know, an equity research report uh, with valuation, you know, comps to other companies, industry sections, you know, things that actually provide value for the investor. And, and, and also, I received uh, recently one of the companies that we were doing an interview with. I asked if they had any research coverage. They sent me a report. And it was page 10 before they even mentioned the company. This, they were representing it as research about them, but it wasn't really research about it. It was about the sector. So it doesn't really get pinged, you know, except, except without the, no, the noise or the melody on the terminal. It then, it's not really research report. Well, it's, it's a research report, but the, the, the question is, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? And that's the whole thing about, you know, getting the research out there. And a lot of uh, companies, especially on the buy side, will do internal reports. So they'll do, or what they call maybe a desk report. And a desk report means it's done for the company and sent to the company's uh, representatives and company's clients. It doesn't go outside the walls. Even some of the uh, sell side analysts out there who are covering companies, they often just keep the distribution amongst their, um, amongst their clients. And so it doesn't even get uploaded uh, into some of these these broker terminals, which I, I find is is very surprising because you know you want to be part of the consensus, part of the community. Um, you know when you upload this information, what, why is it important? Is because you know it then gets into things like estimates and forecast and target prices. So when people are looking at a company's stock, they can actually see oh there's a forecast a revenue forecast for that company. Uh, you can see a target price for that company. And the more analysts that upload, uh, the more sort of a, a consensus you can uh, you can gather about that stock, right? And that's why I think it's important that you upload and uh, your reports into these platforms uh, to get as wide as distribution as possible. Well, thank you so much for updating us today. And for everybody out there who wants to know more, here is Chris Thompson's email. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Tracy.